you know, you still ride your skateboard to work, there's the comic book collection, the race car bed. Look, I'm young at heart, but I put money to my 401k every paycheck. I picked up a few savings tips at feedthepig.org. I have control of my financial life now, and that feels pretty grown up. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. For free ideas and easy tips on ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. So, I bet I look like a grown-up to you now. Well, except for the footy pajamas, I'd have to agree. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. If you suffer from excruciating back pain, do not have surgery. Call Dr. Fernando Ranella, MD, and ask him about the new ozone therapy and how it can eliminate your back pain once and for all. End your suffering today. Call Dr. Fernando Ranella, the Center for Back Pain Management, 561-819-6325. That's 561-819-6325, or inject pain away. Peter Herrick was a 34-year-old carpenter when he joined the Navy Reserve. Peter's wife, Diana. They were deployed to build schools and bases and to assist the Marines. When the mortar round hit, I was completely knocked out. I didn't wake up until uh, six days later. Paralyzed veteran, Senior National Service Officer Raymond Bruce. I saw Pete when he was at his worst. He didn't know if he was going to live to be able to see his daughter graduate from high school. Raymond knew that I needed help figuring out where do we go from here. We not only represent the veteran, but we represent the whole family. 11 months, uh, we stayed in the hospital down in Tampa. We advocate, we educate, and we process claims through the VA, and we follow that claim from the beginning to the end. Without Paralyzed Veterans of America, I really honestly believe I'd still be in the hospital. You can help our paralyzed veterans. To learn more, visit pva.org, a public service of Paralyzed Veterans of America. Looking for ways to reduce your home's energy use? Propane tankless water heaters heat water instantly, whenever it's needed, eliminating wasted energy. And propane is clean burning and efficient, which is better for the environment. Learn more about energy-saving tankless water heaters at propanefl.com. Propane gas. Exceptional living from the exceptional energy. A message from the Florida Propane Gas Safety, Education, and Research Council, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, and this station. What you want to know. What you need to know. Talk 1470 WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to our show. You're listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections, a place to learn about and celebrate creative arts therapy. Each week we'll explore new ways that music, art, and dance can reach, connect with, and help individuals of all stages of health and wellness. Hi, I'm Bree Bynan, a board-certified music therapist and the managing partner for the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute. Tune in as I interview professionals from healthcare and educational backgrounds on the impact of the creative arts. If you prefer to watch our live video stream, simply visit www.pbmti.com. Hello, and thank you so much for listening to and watching Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you're just joining us for the first time, I am your host. My name is Bree Bynan. I'm a board certified music therapist as well as a certified neurologic music therapist working locally here in Southeast Florida with the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute. We're a private music therapy practice uh, serving different healthcare, educational, and community settings using music as a way to comfort, connect, and reach individuals along their journey through wellness and illness. So I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to share a little bit about the work that we do as well as what other creative arts therapists are doing throughout the community, throughout the country, and today to talk about what is going on worldwide, which is so exciting. Uh, My guests today, I'm going to have two guests calling in today. Uh, Mike Ricucci is going to be calling in from the East Coast. He is the founder of Terror Rising which is a film company that does documentaries. And his first film, which he's going to talk about, was specifically about what music therapy is, 
how it's changing lives. And then he partnered up with Angie Kopshai in Portland, who's a music therapist in Portland, um, owner of Music Therapy Services of Portland. And together they've joined forces and they are traveling the world to show not only what music therapy is doing in the world, but how music as an entity is changing lives. We all know that music is one thing, sometimes the only thing in some situations that connects us, regardless of where we're from, our age, our background, our religion, what season of our life we're in. Music is the one thing that can reach and connect all of us. So it's really incredible to hear about their project, the Global Music Therapy Project, the work that they're doing throughout the world, and what they plan to do in 2016, which is really exciting. In fact, I think, I could be wrong, but I think on tonight's show is the first time they're going to be sharing where they're going in the world in 2016, which is uh, incredible. Um, that they're continuing with their mission, continuing to to reach others with music. I'm so excited to hear about their their future travels and their future endeavors. So this is actually uh, the com- the first quarter of our show of Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections uh, is coming to a close tonight. Our last show of the year, our last show of our thirteenth show here, and I just wanted to take a second to thank. Everyone who has tuned in, has watched, um, I, I can't thank you enough. It's always been a dream of mine personally to, to have a, a forum like this to come and share with others the incredible power of, of music and art and, and the kind of unique and creative ways of reaching out to people when maybe something else is not working. What are other ways that we can reach and touch people's lives? And so this show has just been an incredible experience for me. And it wouldn't uh, be anything without all of you who are listening and watching, sharing the word about it. So I first wanted to start uh, in our New Year's show by thanking you all for that. Uh, it's incredible to be able to talk to professionals throughout our area, which, as you know, if you've been listening to this show, is rich with creative arts therapists. Um, but also to connect with people throughout the country. Uh, We've got to talk to uh, several people who have done practicing up in New York State, my home state, and now to have the opportunity to talk to people who are exploring music therapy throughout the world. It's it's exciting to be on the cusp of the end of 2015, to look into 2016, and to see where all these possibilities are taking us. It's, it's a field that's just going to grow in awareness, in education, and popularity, uh, because I think people are realizing that a lot of the diagnoses that we have today, uh, they're not going away right now, as, as hard as we work for our, our research efforts. But in the meantime, as, as important as that is, as powerful as those research efforts are in coming together as a community to find cures and to find treatment, In the meantime, what are some other things that we can be doing to help others? And music is at the heart of that. And I know that it's no surprise to anyone that music can change our mood. We we use it for ourselves all the time in the car, uh, when we're working out, uh, for any kind. Can you imagine going to a wedding or any celebration and there be no music? I can't imagine it. So music is such an important part of our lives our everyday lives, when we're not going through a challenge and struggle, it makes sense that the use of prescribed music, really, uh, with a credential professional, a board-certified music therapist, why that would be so impactful. So again, we're looking into 2016, all the incredible possibilities that our field has. It's in a really exciting time, um, and one of those being talking to Mike and Angie with the Global Music Therapy Project. It's just a, a very exciting project that they're working on to not only um, shed a light for us here in America about what how music plays a role, specific role in different cultures throughout the world, but also helping to develop uh, music therapy as a field in those areas and recognizing those that are already practicing in those areas. It's so, so exciting. Um, as you know, on this show, we like to talk a little bit about 
Um, also ways that you can, if you're not a board certified music therapist, you're uh, looking to use music for yourselves or for a loved one um, or your professional working with someone. We like to give tools and, and tricks, just pardon me, tools and tricks that you can use at home. So this week, it should come as no surprise. I've been focusing on New Year's with my clients and New Year's resolutions. And again, uh, I work mostly with seniors, many of them living with neurodegenerative disorders. So I, I get to see uh, individuals in different levels of that. Um, and so we talked a lot about New Year's resolutions. I asked, does anyone have a resolution? Have you set resolutions in the past? How did that work out? We hear all the time about, I'm going to lose all this weight. I'm going to become this great athlete. I'm going to make a million dollars. Um, sometimes we set resolutions that are a little bit out of our grasp and sometimes set ourselves up for disappointment when, like a, a genie, we expect to grant these things and it doesn't happen. But I do think there is absolutely merit to setting goals and to, to take this time to look at the last year, what worked, what didn't work, what would you like to bring with you? It's a fresh start. And, um, and to set resolutions based off that achievable, attainable resolutions that aren't just going to um, look good on paper, but they make you feel good so that you can really commit. And this year, I'm going to spend my energy, my time, my love into something that's going to make me feel good because that's going to make others feel good as well. So that's what I focused on with my clients this week. And we made a list of things um, of what are different resolutions they can set. That's something they can do. And it was just as simple as showing kindness, being a good neighbor. What's an example of that? Well, um, my next door neighbor in the facility, this was her first ever morning. So she came in last night and she wasn't sure where she was this morning. So I stopped and helped her figure out where to go. It's as simple as that, just committing to being a good neighbor, to uh, eating healthy. Um, or, uh, learning a new skill was another great one that I love. And we do a lot of that in music therapy that bet you never thought we'd be dancing the Nutcracker Ballet on a parachute today. We're learning something new, constantly growing. One of my group members said, I'm learning Vietnamese this year. And he really is. And that was his commitment that he made. Got a Rosetta Stone. I'm learning Vietnamese. He already knows seven languages. It's incredible. And he's in his nineties. That's amazing. If someone in their 90s can make a resolution to, to learn an entirely new language because he has a caregiver who speaks that language and wants to be able to communicate with her, that is just so inspiring to me. So please, if you do work or live um, with, with someone, you're a caregiver professionally or personally with someone who is aging, someone with maybe dementia or another neurodegenerative disorder, uh, they too can think about resolutions that they can set. For the next year, maybe you can come to a list together. Uh, that's just something you keep on the fridge or, or on the mirror every day to think about. I'm going to show kindness today. I'm going to learn a new skill. I'm going to make a new friend. It's a great options. Uh, we usually save all the music sharing for the end, but our conversations have been so great lately that that has been getting shorter and shorter. So I'm going to do one song in the beginning as our opening today. That's a song that you can use uh, this time of year, very appropriate for New Year's time. Uh, and that is called, What Are You Doing New Year's Eve? Okay, and then after we do the song, we're going to cut to our commercial break and then bring in our guests. But we'll leave you with, what are you doing New Year's Eve? Maybe it's much too early in the game. Oh, but I thought I'd ask you just the same. What are you doing New Year's? New Year's Eve Who's gonna be the one to hold you tight When it's exactly 12 o'clock at night Welcoming in the new year New Year's Eve Maybe I'm crazy 
to suppose I'd ever be the one you chose Out of a thousand invitations you'd receive Oh, but in case I stand one little chance here comes the jackpot question in advance. What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's Eve. Stay with us after this quick commercial break. We're going to be talking to Mike and Angie from the Global Music Therapy Project. Thank you. The Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute is a professional music therapy practice serving medical, community, and educational settings throughout Southeast Florida. With our experienced team of 11 board-certified music therapists, we use music and research-based therapeutic interventions to help individuals of all ages and abilities reach their goals and increase their quality of life. For more information on our services and programs, please visit our website at pbmti.com Engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or call us at 561-747-9944. Mom's fall was a wake-up call. We knew she needed help, but we also knew she'd never leave her home. With jobs and kids, we can't always be there. We weren't sure who to trust to help around the house and make sure she takes her medications. We did our research and found our answer. Bright Star Care. Their home care teams are led by registered nurses with help available 24-7. Thanks to Bright Star Care. Mom can stay where she wants to be, at home. For a standard of care that raises the bar, call 844 for Bright Star. You are listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you'd like to join the conversation, the toll-free number is 888-565-1470. Now back to the show. Hello, thank you so much for listening and watching Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. I'm your host, Bree Bynan, board-certified music therapist with the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute. We are talking about music therapy today, but not only the music therapy that's happening in our area or even nationally, but what is happening globally. Um, I believe we have on the line, Mike and Angie, are you with us? Yeah, hey, okay, wonderful. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having us. Absolutely. If you guys wouldn't mind, just uh, let our listeners know where you're calling from today. Did you I'm Mike, and I'm calling from now? Northern Virginia. Okay, so Mike Ricucci, he's calling from Northern Virginia. He's the founder and director of Terrorizing Films. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. And Angie? I'm calling from Portland, Oregon. Beautiful, and it's probably not six o'clock there, right? It's not. <laughs> You're it's in the really middle of your work day, so <laughs> even more thank you for calling in. <laughs> Appreciate that so much. Um, uh, first, I just wanted to ask you, Mike, just to start, if you might um, give us a little idea of your background is not in music therapy as a profession, and I wondered if you would share with our listeners a little bit how about you f how you found out about the field and what got you interested in. Um, creating a, a documentary about it. Yeah, I uh, when I was younger, there was a uh, there was a merging of the what's now become the AMTA from a couple different organizations, and I read about it in an expose in the newspaper, and it went for about five days in the Washington Post, and I was fascinated, and was all about how um, music therapy, but I was reading it as oh, this music heals, and I didn't know you know specifics. Obviously, I was twelve, but I just found it fascinating that. They were talking about all of these real results that were coming from working with all of these different populations of people. So I got, I just kept it in the back of my mind, and, and then I became a musician, started playing a little bit and, and touring with the band. And after just a, kind of a crazy professional experience of coaching college baseball and, and doing some different things and getting away from music, I wanted to get back to music in, in a different way and really try to figure out a way to support music therapy programs and music education programs that, were, that weren't supported necessarily by every community. You know, they're stronger in some areas than others, but, but just as a whole, I wanted to try to do something to support. So the film kind of came about from just 
asking people what they knew about music therapy or what they thought of music therapy, and it was just such a wide-ranging uh, you know, array of responses and interactions with people that I just thought, you know, let's make a documentary about this. Let's, let's show people what this is, and let's leave it up to them to decide, you know, what this looks like and what music feels like to them and, and all these different stories. So it kind of just came out of a series of events of, of just trying to develop something that would allow people to see music therapy for itself and in, in its own environment. And we're so glad that you were drawn to that, even through a kind of a, a different path. And most of us come to music therapy, that's, it's so interesting to hear that. And so when you had that idea to make the documentary, um, I, I've personally found out about it because I know you went up to uh, my alma mater in uh, Nazareth College, Rochester, New York, and did some work with uh, Dr. King up there and other music therapists in the area. And we were fortunate enough to have you come visit us down here in Southeast Florida, um, film a program we were doing for the National Parkinson's Foundation, and then join one of our happy hour get-togethers so you can meet some different music therapists in the area. Um, so after kind of traveling the whole country, which you did, and I'll let you talk a little bit about that, uh, what brought you to that next step of wanting to expand it internationally? Well, I mean, that the, the international side has really come about through a conversation that I had that was ongoing with Angie, actually. And, and so from a, from a domestic standpoint, um, it, it was an amazing journey around the country, but I, I, as I met different music therapists and we had different experiences with, with filming, you know, developmental disabilities, children on the autistic spectrum, um, um, soldiers with PTSD and, and different mental, mental health issues uh, regarding uh, various populations and into the senior population, the NICUs, and, and all of these different, it just, it was so big. But at the same time, it's only one country. And, and while the United States is very, very different in, in its areas, it still is just one country. And so I met Angie in Portland, and that's really where the international conversation began as we started to talk about, and she shared her experiences with me, uh, which, are, which are incredibly uh, fascinating. And, and, and they really inspired me to see that we could start to begin to do these programs. And so just through a through a very long series of conversations with uh, Angie, we, we developed an idea of being able to take this internationally and, and, and put something more in, and make it more than just the film. Um, the film is, is a piece of the Global Music Therapy Project, but really put forth an effort that would allow us to facilitate the growth of these programs. And, and the first step in that for me as a documentary filmmaker and, and somebody that's a part of this was, was to learn as much as I could. And, and, and that's, that's what the process has been for me from day one, and it continues through. So, Angie, this was really a passion of yours to make this international connection. Yeah, yeah. C can you talk a little bit about that? Is that something you had done before, before meeting Mike? Had you gone to other countries or done any kind of mission trips like that? Yeah, so I've been definitely really passionate about um, sort of expanding my horizons globally for, for forever, since I was a little girl. Um, so my first attempt to, to do music therapy in another country was Costa Rica in 2007. And, and um, I went there a couple times and just sort of pushed my way into an orphanage and convinced them that they should uh, let me do some music therapy. And, and it worked. I won them over. And the, the hope was to just create an ongoing program where other music therapists could come and, and experience that and just sort of take their music therapy experiences to another level. Um, and, then, and then I got busy, so I didn't make it to another country for, for a while. And then finally, Ecuador, um, there is, there's an amazing man out there named Aldo who was reaching out to the United States on behalf of um, an organization that he worked for, and he was looking for someone to train the musicians there to, um, who were working with kids with special needs already. And so since special needs is my forte, uh, I really felt like this was the, it was a great opportunity to sort of take the plunge um, of, of just actually bringing in music therapy and, and also incorporating Mike into it. So it would be, it felt like a, a nice, since I already had a counterpart there, since Aldo was already there and really interested, it felt like a, a nice, safe way to, to bring in Mike and see if we could work together and see if we could make this whole documentary, take it to a, a global level and incorporate music therapy all at the same time. Uh, anyway, bring it all together. So, so that's where 
Ecuador fell in to place, and that was so, so really, it was only the second country where I'd gone and done music therapy. That's wonderful. So I, I know that it's, it's kind of um, threefold here, wanting to make the documentary, which, Mike, is this, is this different than the one that was here in the United States, or is it all one project? No, it's all it's all one project. Okay. I mean, I think that most a lot of music therapists would know that music therapy is so vast, and so we're not trying to cram everything into one thing. We're really trying to figure out the best medium that we can deliver the most information in the most impactful way. Great. So you know, the documentary bringing awareness um, about music therapy and the way that um, people use music all over the world. Uh, connecting with music therapists, right? You've kind of put out a charge to different music therapists around the world to connect with. Mm-hmm. That's great. And then, um, and like you said, doing maybe some training and, and talking to countries um, that maybe didn't have music therapists but were interested. Is, am I understanding that right as kind of the, the focus of the project? Yes. And yes I would say correct. the ultimate objective is to, to create music therapy sites. So even like in Ecuador, um, yeah, I train musicians, and although they can't call themselves music therapists, they're using music therapeutically, but uh, it definitely there are a lot of places where I feel like we could potentially create a music therapy site and actually bring in a board-certified music therapist. That's wonderful. And, um, you know, looking back as our New Year's show, looking back at the last year, looking forward, one is the most if not the the most exciting thing that I did this year, not having much travel experience at all, is that I got the opportunity to go to Peru and, and travel around Peru, and it's just one incredible country that is. Um, so I know that was your, your second stop, correct? Yes, yes that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, <laughs> it was wonderful. And, and you did meet a music therapist in Peru? Yeah, and that was actually the first time. It was exciting. So we met Eric Ba. Um, and in Ecuador, you know, we didn't actually meet a music therapist. So uh, Peru was our first chance to meet another music therapist working in another country, and it was was really exciting. And he he took us to a couple of his sites, actually three. I think we got we got to see three different clients in action, and uh, it was incredible, it's amazing. That's amazing. And um, before we wrap to our next commercial, I know I'm jumping over a little bit here just um, because there's so many exciting things to talk about. But I know like on your website and your your Facebook page is hopefully people will reach out and find out more information after listening and watching the show um, that you say specifically this project is changing the way people use music. Um, I just wondered if you guys would speak to that. What what do you mean by that? So it's Okay, I'm sorry. I'm doing all the talking, Mike. <laughs> hey, no, it's a, it's about time somebody somebody else talk for a bit. I'm enjoying. So it. my goal is for everyone to understand that we, as human beings, we have physiologic responses to music, and music therapy for me, it isn't magic. It's just science put into action. And uh, my dream is just to have a day where I say I'm a music therapist, and everybody automatically knows what that means, and that I'm really using music. Uh, to create change in a person and that our brains and our bodies respond to music. That's I, it for me. I love it. <laughs> and that's part of our, our mission here, why we have this show as well. And um, so that's really great. And Mike, do you want to speak to that a little bit? I do. And I think that it, what, when, what I love about just listening to the two of you interact is that, you know, for so long we didn't have a music therapist associated with the project and, and we were associated with a lot of music therapists. But being able to have a music therapist that 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 has that brings a lot to the to the project, but as well can can speak about the topic, can speak about the, the subject matter, and, and reaching out, I think it just brings a lot more credibility to the project. So it's great to be able to to kind of sit back and, and be able to focus on the filmmaking and, and my own education and, and music therapy. So for me, um, you know, with terrorizing films, we wanted we had the concept of elevating the perception of music, and when when Angie and I had talked, that was that was. We, we spoke of similar things that kind of created the spark of like, okay, maybe maybe we're on to something here and this, this can turn into something that we actually can travel and, and bring some, some tangibility to the idea. So, you know, I, I think seeing music in different ways as entertainment, education, therapy, as not one is better than the other um, genres. You know, I think that, that I learned that while I, in, my, in the last four years of like, I've seen Justin Bieber really help people. Justin Bieber has no idea he does, and, and probably everyone 
well, not everyone, but a lot of people may have just cringed, you know, hearing that from me. But, but the, the truth is that it has nothing to do with Justin Bieber, and it's how that client responded to it. And so I think when I look at music and the genres having more to do with the person that's listening to it than, than somebody else's opinion of it, um, understanding that music can be so many different things, I think it opens up the mind to understanding that, that, that we don't have to look at something so, so one-dimensionally. And, and that three-dimensional perspective can, can just help us see things a little bit more clear. I love uh, that you said that and also how you phrased it. I think, you know, to Angie's point, we spend so much time educating people on what music therapy is and advocating for it that it does come across that we put ourselves in a box sometimes. And I, and I love that we've taken that passion for spreading the word, but also with um, kind of your, your outsider perspective, but also, Mike, your, your desire just to shine a light on what music in general can do to show that one is not better than the other. They're, com they're all different ways, and music is impactful because of what it is at its core. It's music. So any way that we share that has such an incredible impact. So I'm, I can't wait to, to learn more specifics about this project. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break, but stay on, and we're going to come right back to talking about the Global Music Therapy Project. Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute is a professional music therapy practice serving medical, community, and educational settings throughout Southeast Florida. With our experienced team of 11 board-certified music therapists, we use music and research-based therapeutic interventions to help individuals of all ages and abilities reach their goals and increase their quality of life. For more information on our services and programs, please visit our website at pbmti.com Engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or call us at 561-747-9944. Mom's fall was a wake-up call. We knew she needed help, but we also knew she'd never leave her home. With jobs and kids, we can't always be there. We weren't sure who to trust to help around the house and make sure she takes her medications. We did our research and found our answer. Bright Star Care. Their home care teams are led by registered nurses with help available 24-7. Thanks to Bright Star Care. Mom can stay where she wants to be, at home. For a standard of care that raises the bar, call 844 for Bright Star. You are listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you'd like to join the conversation, the toll-free number is 888-565-1470. Now back to the show. Hello, you are listening to and watching Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections in our new time, 6 to 7 p.m. We have been here for a few weeks now, so if you've just stumbled upon us, we hope you will continue to listen in. We will be here at the same time in the new year. Uh, I actually will be out of town, but you'll see some familiar faces, some of uh, previous guests from the show that will be hosting the show, and they'll be sharing music and having a lot of fun. So I hope you'll tune in to support them and, and hear what they have to say. Uh, I have connected through the phone Mike and Angie with the Global Music Therapy Project. You guys still there? Still here. Still here. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, so before the break, we were talking uh, in general what the Global Music Therapy Project is, how it got started, and how it kind of was birthed out of this domestic tour that you did, Mike, through your company, Terrorizing Films. So I wondered if, if you, Mike, might start by telling us what you notice as a filmmaker the differences between filming here in the U.S. to taking it internationally on the road? I think uh, environment is, is, such a, is such an overlooked concept when you have access to a car all the time. Um, you know, you, we, you see certain environments in one area and you, and you hear stories. Um, and, I, and I think that when you see certain people dealing with certain situations in some of these countries, it's, it's really powerful and and so when you're in the when we're in the jungles of, of south america and and out in the mountains of uganda filming i mean it was all it was it was hiking it, it was a lot of hiking especially in uganda uh with with the different um food that they were serving and everything that they had to grow that was right there especially their animals and so um i think what they relied on musically was very uh simple in what we would view as is an array of instruments or, or selection of instruments i mean a lot of the time it was just using beats made from um different objects and and just their own voices and, and things like that and one of the best 
and, and, I, and I say this, one of the best experiences I've ever had um, in my life, we were in, we stayed in one of the houses, and in the morning for an alarm clock, this family, just this, this family of five, this, this single mother with five, uh, four children, just they sang perfect harmony to wake us up in the morning, and it was absolutely beautiful. So yeah. the way in the instances that music was used, and some of the instruments that were used and, and just in some of the environments that we saw them used in, those were really different than what we saw in America. Absolutely. And was it just the, the two of you, or did you have others traveling with you? We had, we had our sound engineer, Harold, with us in South America and Africa. If Harold is listening, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Shout out to Harold. <laughs> wow, that's, I, I can only imagine, I mean, I'm sure that was a real summary of the incredible things you observed geographically, some of the challenges I'm sure you had that wouldn't have, you know, necessarily come across in the States, although I know you had those as well with vans breaking down and snow and <laughs> everything else, also being from upstate New York, you, you knew how to drive in the snow, which was good. Um, Angie, did. how about for you recognizing... Um, music and and the cultural differences between the way that they they used music. What what was stood out to you? Uh, well, that's such a it's such a fascinating subject. I could go on for forever. Um, but the the ethnomusicological aspect of it, just with each of these countries looking at at how they're using music and what instruments they use, uh, is so fascinating. But um, you know, going along with what Mike was saying, to just see how. Some of these countries, they're using, it's it's just, uh, it's nice and simple. It's like back to the basics. And it really inspired me to use a little to make a lot. Um, you know, I can just, all I need sometimes is my voice. We have our bodies. We can do body percussion. We can dance. We can, if there's a guitar, then great. But uh, I feel like sometimes in my practice, I try to make things too complicated back here in the U.S. Um, so that part was really inspiring. And then another part that I really love is with my work here, um, I specialize in autism, and I'm really trying to get families to make their lives a musical all the time. It's just it's what I say to everyone, use music with everything. And it's sometimes uncomfortable for parents or for caretakers. It's, it's a little embarrassing. Our culture doesn't quite embrace it like we could. Um, and in Africa especially, music is just, it's it's everywhere. Like Mike said, you know, they wake up in the morning and they sing, first thing. And so to see that, to see how a country can really just use music in every aspect of their life, they can make their lives a musical, uh, is really inspiring to me, really powerful. Do you feel like having this experience and seeing the different ways that cultures use and appreciate music has changed your work back in Portland? Um, well, yeah, I think it's, you know, yes, yes. It changes me. I mean, every time I travel, it changes me as a person. I'm more humbled. Um, but I'm really inspired. Uh, I'm, I always come back really inspired. And I learn from, from all of these. I mean, you're just, my perspective has changed. So, so, yeah, in so many ways, it changes me as a person. It changes my perspective. And it definitely um, inspires me to, to work harder and be more creative and use new ideas here in the U.S., for sure. That's great. If, if you wouldn't mind both, um, just kind of summing up, I'm sure experience just this And, and this project. Mike, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I think just, and, and I'm going to start and take a, take a nice big one of just being able to launch it, being able to see a series of conversations that span the distance of a country between people um, actually coming together and then being able to take the, the things that we do the best, the things that we're good at, you know, Angie and music therapy and, and, and all the different things that she's done to connect and network with people internationally to create the Ecuador trip and, and gives me the opportunity to come down there to film. Um, and then also the documentaries, terrorizing films, I think just getting to see that actually happen um, really gave a lot of hope and, and a lot of momentum and it built a lot of support for, for what we're trying to do quickly. So that was, that was probably my most favorite was just actually seeing the birth of it and, and just the opportunity that lays ahead. That's great. Angie? Oh, I'm, I'm kind of on the same page with him. So, I mean, Ecuador for me was the most, it was our first experience, and it was 
the most exciting so far for me because they treated us. We already had a plan in place as far as, like, I was going there to do some training, and I worked really hard to be really prepared for that. But I walked in, and they treated us so well and with so much respect, and they were like fox stars. I mean, not that that's what this is all about, but they were so excited for what we had to say. And every day we met so many musicians who were inspired, and they had fantastic questions. And ultimately, at, that, at the end of that week, um, I think it was on Thursday night, and then our big presentation was on Friday, where we were sort of pitching to the government, trying to encourage them to create funding for music therapy. But I asked Mike if he could create a little a little trailer. Just like, hey, can you create a 60-second trailer? And he stayed up all night and made the most amazing presentation and just review of our week um, and to, to actually see that. And I didn't realize at the time that that was the first time he had actually transcended his work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he, he spent all night putting that together. And then I created uh, a little speech that I actually said in Spanish. And my Spanish is not fantastic, so this was a, a really big endeavor for me. So between the two of us, uh, on the final day there, we were able to give all of us, give all of our heart, all his work where he stayed up all night and me with where I just really summarized the entire week and and it was accepted with so much love and the networking that came from that was it was incredible. It was so we got to actually we had such a successful experience on our very first try in another country. So that was that really was awesome. Well Mike, you are definitely a person who makes it happen which is why we love you. And I'm so glad that you guys got found each other and synced up your, your dreams and your passions together because something really beautiful and important uh, has come out of that. And I'm just so honored that you would come on this show and, and share about it. Angie, I know that you have to wrap up because you have to go back to work um, yes. as you are on the uh, West Coast. It's a different time there. So um, I just wondered if you guys would like to take some time before the break and to share together what the plans for 2016 are. Excellent. Okay. Um, <laughs> 2000, Where do you start? Okay. So a couple things. Um, we're going to. Uh, oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm going to stop you because you're going. To, you're so excited that you're talking at the same time. <laughs> um, Angie, I'm going to let you go enough. first because I, I know you got to hop off. <laughs> Mike, you have to wait. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, so in, in Ecuador, someone asked us to present at a conference in Buenos Aires. Uh, so we definitely have that on the calendar. And then when we were in New York, we met some music therapists from Europe who really encouraged us to go to a conference in Vienna. So um, those are the big two ones that, that are definitely specifically music therapy related that, are, that we already have the networks that we've, we've met. Um, and then, uh, and then I'm going to let Mike talk about all the rest of them. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. <laughs> so there's a funny story about what just happened. We'll share that later. But the, um, <laughs> but yeah. So we've got we've been able to make connections through music. You know, I think being outside of music therapy, it's given me an opportunity to make connections with different organizations. And so programs in Iceland, um, not only through music therapy, but music education, and even some of the performers in Iceland are going to share, um, and like Angie said, the ethnomusicological side, so we're, we're getting the history and the culture of music, uh, as well as, as you know, promoting the Global Music Therapy Project. So I think Iceland is, is really high on our list, and, and Nepal and, and sort of the Indian subcontinent is, is wow. really uh, a place that, that because of sound and because of music and, and really the different connections that we've been able to make is, is definitely high on our priority list for 2016. And are any of these places that the two of you have been to before? No. Okay. Not for me. <laughs> um, so cultural considerations and language barriers, how, how do you prepare for something like that? We diligently prepare, Bree, <laughs> with with studying and books and quizzing each other and flashcards. No, we um, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> we, 
We, no, we've, that, you bring up a really good point because, I mean, being culturally conscious, I think, is really essential. And so understanding the culture, understanding the laws, understanding the vaccinations, that's always a, that's always a, yeah, a great time. But um, really getting to know the culture and then connecting with people. So for any language barrier, um, you know, we connect with different people that are able to speak some of the language and translate or all of the language, and then we pick it up. I mean, Angie speaks Spanish very well. And, and so that, that was extremely helpful. And then we were in Uganda, though, and they speak for Chiga, which is a tribal language. And, and we were about, we were, we were very far away from the capital. We were actually right over, um, connected to uh, the Rwandan border, about, about an hour and a half from Kigali, the capital. And so they spoke a very ancient tribal language called Ruchiga. So we learned some of it. Uh, we learned with Ngoma, you know, and Drum and, and Agunde. And so we, we, really wanted to embrace what the cultures were, so we're trying to educate ourselves. This is a process, and I think what I'm saying as well is this is a process where we will go to these countries numerous times. Um, the Global Music Therapy Project film will obviously have an end at some point, but the Global Music Therapy Project is going to carry on this work, and, and so we want to be able to go to these places and continue to educate ourselves in language just so we can you know, understand how the communication culturally and musically is going to happen between the people there um, so that the programs reflect the communities and the environments in which they're built. Very, very exciting. Angie, I'm going to let you hop off. I know you have to go. Mike, can you stay on? Of course, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Angie. It's just so fascinating. I know we didn't begin to even scratch the surface, so we're going to talk a lot after the break about how you can get in touch with Mike and Angie, learn more about the Global Music Therapy Project. But again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. All right. After this commercial, we'll return with Mike Ricucci, the Global Music Therapy Project. The Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute is a professional music therapy practice serving medical, community, and educational settings throughout Southeast Florida. With our experienced team of 11 board-certified music therapists, we use music and research-based therapeutic interventions to help individuals of all ages and abilities reach their goals and increase their quality of life. For more information on our services and programs, please visit our website at pbmti.com, engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or call us at 561-747-9944. Mom's fall was a wake-up call. We knew she needed help, but we also knew she'd never leave her home. With jobs and kids, we can't always be there. We weren't sure who to trust to help around the house and make sure she takes her medications. We did our research and found our answer. Bright Star Care. Their home care teams are led by registered nurses with help available 24-7. Thanks to Bright Star Care, Mom can stay where she wants to be, at home. For a standard of care that raises the bar, call 844 for Bright Star. You are listening to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. If you'd like to join the conversation, the toll-free number is 888-565-1470. Now back to the show. Thank you for joining us. You're listening to and watching Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. I'm your host, Bree Bynan, board-certified music therapist here in Southeast Florida with the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute. I hope you've been had the opportunity to listen throughout our show today. It's been uh, we've been learning so many exciting things about not only what's happening with music therapy here in the United States, but what's going on with music globally around the world. And Mike Ricucci of Terrorizing Films has set out on the road to capture this, to capture what music is doing for individuals. Um, in South America, in Africa, and beyond in 2016. So, Mike, you still there? I'm right here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on, sharing about the Global Music Therapy Project. Now, we've crammed a lot of experience and a lot of information into a short amount of time. So I wonder if you just take a minute, we'll probably repeat it again later, but just to um, let people know how they can get in touch with you, how can they engage with you, find out more information. For sure. The, uh, we've got a website that's under construction. This all happened very quickly. So uh, we've got a website that is currently under development, but the Facebook page, the Global Music Therapy Project, we're keeping everybody updated, everybody uh, in the loop of what's going on, where we're going, when the website will be done, and then on Twitter at uh, Global MT Project. 
Um, so, so those are the best ways. And then, of course, through Angie, uh, Music Therapy Services of Portland, uh, musictherapyportland.com. That has a lot of blog and information about things. So that's like her, her website is serving as sort of the hub before we get the main website up. Great. And also, I'm... Um, Feel free to take this time to talk about terrorizing because you guys do amazing things, shedding light on um, a lot of important issues, just music therapy globally being one of them, but you're a great connector. So how can people reach you through terrorizing? Definitely. Um, terrorizing, T-E-R-R-A-Rising.com. That's, the, that's our website. And then through social media at Terrorizing Film, no S, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Terrorizing Film. We've got a, uh, a video up. Uh, on YouTube right now of the Global Music Therapy Project. And so Terrorizing's role in this is obviously, I mean, I'm, you know, founder of, co-founder of the Global Music Therapy Project and then founder of Terrorizing Films and vice versa with Angie and her company. So, you know, we we are serving as, as our documentary is, is a part of this. And so Terrorizing Film is excited to have that video up that, that features the Global Music Therapy Project and everything that, that's going on there. So we'd love for people to check out that video. It's on Angie's site. It's on the Terrorizing site. It's on all of our different social medias. Um, and, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Great. And certainly it takes a community, it takes a village to achieve um, the goals that you all have, and you pull upon that amazing supported, supportive community that you have. How, If someone is listening, watching from anywhere, I've got family that listens in New Zealand, so people are able to watch and listen to this all over the world. Um, what? How can people get engaged? We talked about how to reach you, but what are ways they can help you? Um, how can they help support this project, whether it's uh, financially or through networking, connections? What What do you all need right now? Um, all of the things that you listed, right? That, right. <laughs> that's great. We we um, we have been thankful to you know be able to to just we've been supported from so many different great people throughout the beginning of of not just the Global Music Therapy Project, but also the uh, the, the film itself. And and I have amazing friends and family and business partners that that have really helped you know see this through and and helped all of us you know get to where we want to be. So if you're in New Zealand or anywhere in the world. Um, first of all, you can email me personally, Michael at era-rising.com, T-E-R-R-A-rising.com. Um, we have, th- so so the ways that people can support, we are developing, and we actually just got back from Indiana. We've been do- doing some domestic stops as well. And so we're developing internship programs. We're developing volunteer programs, not only for our instrument donation program that's now been that's now housed in the Global Music Therapy Project, but now we want to work with other instrument donation programs because it doesn't have to be just in house. By being able to develop relationships, and, and I think sometimes we there's nonprofits and there's competition between nonprofits, and that kind of defeats the entire philosophy of a nonprofit. So I think we really want to design programs and opportunities for a variety of different organizations and different communities to help support. So we want to we want to build local communities in the different towns, cities, provinces, countries, um, prefectures, whatever the, the nomenclature is, and in, in the districts uh, as well. We've been in districts before, so we want to we want to be able to see people reach out to us. And, and, and share, you know, if they want to build a music therapy program. We are offering sponsorships. That's another, that's another big part of what we're doing because Terrorizing Films is now doing uh, video work for a variety of different organizations. And so we'll be doing sponsorships and, and filming commercials for different uh, groups that are supporting uh, the Global Music Therapy Project, and everybody will be able to find out more about that online, um, as well as social media campaigns through Social In. And I've got to give a big shout-out to London who has supported me from the beginning and has helped me, really helped me uh, get to a place where we're able to, to go around the world and, and, and have different people be a part of this. So those are the ways that people can help, and there'll be a lot of information when our website's finished here in about a week. Oh, great, wonderful. Well, and we'll be sure to share the show again, especially when that information is up there. This call to action is is not an empty promise. You are a man of your word when it comes to connecting with people. Absolutely, you you follow up. You again, you're the reason. Really, this is happening, Mike. And and as a music therapist and as a lover of um, uh, music around the world, I just want to thank you again for what you do and your mission and your passion. Uh, from a Facebook or a tweet that I saw years ago that you were in the area to a text message and there you were filming us sharing 
a, a story of a couple who was ch facing challenges of Parkinson's disease, and they will have that gift forever of, of you being able to capture that time they spent together. And that's a s very small piece of the work that you do and what you've, you've been a part of. So uh, on behalf of myself, our practice, music therapy, thank you for that, really. Oh, it's, it's my it's 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 an honor, Brie. Like what you guys do is is incredible, and and being able to now, it, being able to have a music therapist like Angie be able to implement these programs and develop programs with professionals in the field and and other people, you know, through training and, and these kind of things. It's it's just it's what I wanted in the beginning for Terror Rising. It's all I wanted to really do was build music programs. Like through the when it was a record label, and now that it's become a film company, my intention was always to build and help music therapy programs. And we'll do it through music, we'll do it through film, we'll figure out the best way to do it. And, and it'll, it's going to be all of them. We've got a whole concert series happening in Indiana that, that, that I'm excited to talk about as well. There's so much to talk about. But, um, but, but it's, I really appreciate your words. And, and, to, and to be sincere, it's, it's, a meaningful, it's a meaningful mission for us. It's a meaningful mission for me. It's a beautiful engagement between therapists and clients and families and clients and being able to see, you know, being able to see the actual results over all of these years, like our feature down in Atlanta, Jacob Moore, uh, being able to be in touch with you. And, and now it's turned into you're helping us get the word out about what we're doing. So it's, it's just, it's a really an evolution of, of connections and relationships and being sincere and, and following through with what you say and, and, so it's been a great adventure, and, and we're truly grateful and thankful that it's going to take us all over the world and has already started, too. So. Absolutely. And to recap, if anyone is joining late, they've been to South America, started in Ecuador, uh, that went to Peru, uh, went to U Uganda and Africa after that. And, and just a real quick summary in, in one minute, Mike, uh, tell us about your plans of 2016 again. 2016, we'll be headed to Vienna, Austria, Buenos Aires, uh, um, Argentina, uh, Nepal, uh, the UK, Iceland. We'll actually be headed up to North Dakota. If any of our North Dakota friends are listening right now, we will be headed back up to Grand Forks, North Dakota in February, back to Indiana to begin the concert series in April and start to develop our internship programs through a couple different universities and colleges in the area. So that's just the beginning of 2016. So we'll have to check back in with you, Bree, around late, late springtime to tell you what's going on in the, uh, the latter part of 2016. Well, I hope you will put us on your calendar to, to come speak with us again and, and share. If if not able to be here in person, you're always welcome here in South Florida. I hope you call in um, and just continue to be a friend of the show. We, we'll keep supporting you guys and your mission. Um, what we didn't talk about, but just kind of briefly, was um, was the instrument drive. So uh, we'll just make sure when people engage with us, uh, Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute on Twitter, Facebook, our blog, we're going to point you to Mike at Terror Rising, the Global Music Therapy Project. Again, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to come on tonight and share all of this with us. My pleasure, Bree. Thank you so much for, for supporting and helping us get the word out there. Have a great night. Absolutely. You as well. And to everyone listening and watching, I ho wish you a safe, happy, and healthy New Year. Remember, set those reasonable uh, attainable resolutions that are going to bring joy to your life and to those who love you and that you love. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2016. Thanks so much. to Palm Beach Music Therapy Connections. We hope you enjoyed today's program and discovered new ways to bring music, art, and dance into your home or workplace. Please find a copy of today's show at pbmti.com. If you have any questions for our guest or myself, please email me at bree, that's B-R-E-E, -E, at pbmti.com. Or call the Palm Beach Music Therapy Institute at 561 747-9944. Tune back in next week for an all-new live show. See you then. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.